Hello everyone, in this episode I'm going to talk about another division rule called Constraint Equal Awards Rule. Um, well, here is the formal definition. For any claims problem CE and for any agent I, well, the claim, uh, Constraint Equal Awards Rule, uh, award for player I, is equal to the minimum of two parameters, CI or lambda, whichever is minimum, all right? where lambda satisfies such that uh, the summation of the uh, rewards basically adds up to the uh, total surplus E. That's it. Well, what does it say intuitively? It basically says each agent I is going to be rewarded uh, at least his claim, right? Because this is the minimum of these two. Um, I'm sorry, at most his claim. Um, and at least some parameter lambda, all right? So if claim is very, very small, well, we're going to give this guy his claim, but if the claim of this player is very, very large, well, you know what? I'm going to pull all those agents with huge uh, claims, and I'm just going to give them the same, equal, all right? So sort of I divide the uh, creditors into two groups those who have high claims, those who have low claims, all right? That's basically what this rule does. I'm sorry, yes, what this rule does. So those with high claims, I treat all of them equally and give them lambda. And for all those who have small claims, I just give them whatever they claim, all right? Well, how do I determine what claim is big, what claim is small? Well, obviously this, this is endogenously determined. Well, that is determined uh, by, by this lambda and this lambda term is, uh, has to satisfy this. Well, what is this thing? Well, this thing, I mean, don't forget, this is nothing but, so this guy is C-E-A-I, all right? Uh, C-E, which basically is nothing but the efficiency condition, all right? So it's like alpha has to be such that the rule is efficient, okay? You cannot just make any alpha because otherwise the rule is not going to be efficient. So uh, let's give an example. So let's suppose I, I have an, a numerical example, so let me cheat. Uh, let's suppose the surplus we would love to distribute among uh, four players is 200 units. And the claim vector is first agent claims 100. The second agent claims nothing, zero. The third agent claims 200. And then the fourth agent, this is the third, I'm sorry. The fourth agent claims another 100. Okay, so uh, if this is the case, how do I find the award vector, uh, CEA? Uh, well, remember, this is what has to be the case. So I basically look at the following. Uh, so CEA vector, uh, under this problem CE is going to be this, the minimum of CI comma high lambda. So 100 or lambda, which I don't know. Uh, and then minimum of zero lambda, uh, minimum of 200 lambda. I mean, I know the min, max, these operators are not so easy to work with, but in fact, they are not so complicated uh, if you look at them carefully, uh, and then minimum uh, 100 uh, lambda, okay? Okay, so, well, there are a lot of min, so how do I get rid of this min operator? So here's one thing. Well, there are clearly several thresholds I may consider. Well, for example, what if lambda is less than zero? Lambda is less than zero, all right? Uh, I mean, I, I know it doesn't make sense, but well, I mean, because I need to compare zero with lambda. So therefore this is one of the possibilities. Well, I also need to compare lambda with hundred, right? So therefore what if lambda is greater than or equal to zero, but less than hundred or maybe equal to zero as well. What if lambda is higher than hundred this is 100, but less than uh, or equal to 200. What if lambda is greater than 200? Okay, that's right. I mean, there are four possibilities, basically. Because, once again, uh, I am comparing 100 with lambda, 0 with lambda, 200 with lambda. So, therefore, I need to know uh, how 
you know, this entire thing is going to behave when lambda is less than zero, less than 100, less than 200, etc. So if lambda is less than zero, what do I get? It's like minimum of everything is basically zero. So zero plus zero plus zero. Plus. So the reward vector is going to be zero. Uh, but then it doesn't satisfy this because when I sum all the zeros, I'm going to get zero, which is not equal to E. So therefore, this case is not, I mean, lambda shouldn't be less than or equal to zero. Well, can I have lambda in between zero and 100? Could be. If it is the case, well, then this CEA vector, all right, uh, I'm sorry for my terrible notation. So CEA, the reward vector, I, forget, I ignore the parenthesis CE, is going to be this, minimum of 100 lambda. Okay, so this thing is the minimum of lambda and 100 is equal to lambda, right? So if lambda is equal to 100, um, you know, lambda is 100. If lambda is less than 100, say 50, well, you know, this min is equal to 50. So therefore, this is lambda, okay? What about this, zero and lambda? Remember, lambda is uh, greater than uh, zero because I, 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 I already eliminated lambda equals zero case. So therefore, the min is zero. Minimum of 200 lambda is lambda. Minimum of 100 lambda is, is lambda. So therefore, uh, okay, this could actually satisfy this if lambda is, is you, know, uh, uh, you know, in between this range. Well, what is this summation? So when I add them up, 3 lambda equals 200, which is the, reward, uh, sorry, the surplus amount. So lambda has to be equal to 200 divided by 3. Huh. So what does that equal to? Uh, I'm sorry. So this is uh, almost like 600 and, uh, I'm sorry, 66, 67 or something like this, right? Almost like 67. Uh, yeah, almost like 67. Uh, is, is it in between 0 and 100? Yes, it is. Huh. So then I actually found my lambda. You may wonder, um, can I, sh I mean, should I keep continue looking at those cases? No, once you find lambda, uh, you don't really need to look at the other because there's going to be only one lambda satisfying this property. Uh, why is that? Well, because this is a, a sort of a linear uh, uh, sort of optimization problem. Uh, and so the, the, the solution is going to be unique. But, but, but the thing is, I mean, if you're not, 100% sure about what you're doing here, you can check the other scenarios. For example, check the scenario where lambda is in between 100 and 200. If this is the case, well, then CEA is going to be, well, lambda is something bigger than 100. So the minimum of 100 and lambda is going to be 100. The minimum of zero lambda is going to be zero. Minimum of 200 lambda, remember lambda is less than 200, so it's going to be lambda. And then minimum uh, 100 lambda is going to be 100. So what does that mean? That means when I add these numbers, I'm going to have 200 plus lambda has to be equal to E, which is 200. So lambda has to be zero. But to begin with, lambda, I assumed, is a number greater than 100. So therefore, we cannot have lambda in this region. Similarly, I mean, check as an exercise, lambda cannot be greater than 200. So therefore, Lambda is equal to 200 divided by 3. Hmm. So, therefore, the CEA of this problem, of this particular problem, meaning constraint equal awards rule, is going to distribute this $200 among these four players as follows. The minimum of 100 lambda, which is lambda, right? So it's going to be 200 divided by 3, 0. 200 divided by 30, 200 divided by 30. That's it. So you see what, what it is doing? There are one, two, three big uh, creditors. They get exactly the same amount. And then just one guy who has a very small claim. I mean, uh, if this wasn't zero, what, but I don't know, very small, like one or five or 10, well, then this would be 10 or C2. But obviously these would be different because this lambda doesn't only depend on the other numbers, but also depends on this. 
So if I change the claim of the second guy, it will change the value of lambda. Okay, don't forget that. All right, well, when it comes to the properties, uh, for this rule, uh, constraint equal awards rule, I think it's very straightforward that it satisfies efficiency, right? Uh, by definition, non-negativity, uh, well, obviously, each player is going to get the minimum of ci or some lambda term and we know that lambda is a positive number is it greater than one less than one here the this lambda has nothing to do with proportional rule lambda okay don't confuse obviously as you see lambda here is not less than one uh, but it's positive because no negative number is going to satisfy this uh, no negative lambda uh, right Okay, so therefore this is non-negativity, it satisfies non-negativity and claim boundedness because it's minimum of these two. So therefore it can be at most CI. Uh, equal treatments of equals is obviously or clearly satisfied because um, uh, the award for each player is the minimum of CI and lambda. So if player I and J, well all the players have exactly the same lambda, if player I and J has exactly the same claim, well then uh, they will have to they will have to have a uh, same award so equal treatment of equals is clearly and and, 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 and I think it's very obvious um, the claim monotonicity the resource monotonicity and respect of minimal rights they're not probably that straightforward uh, so I leave them as an exercise but let me just give you one hint uh, for all for this rule constraint equal awards rule same was true for proportional rule uh, both of them and actually the two other uh, division rule I'm going to talk about in the next two episodes satisfy all those properties so all you have to do is to prove that this rule satisfies respect of minimal rights claims monotonicity or and resource monotonicity okay